guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some more economical Christmas crafting. Stay tuned. everyone to my channel. I am so glad that you are choosing to spend a portion of your day with me. And a big thank you to everyone who has bought me a cup of coffee and all of my monthly club members. You guys are going way above and beyond to help me keep this channel running and I am forever grateful. Thank you so much. Today we're going to spend some more time playing with gift boxes because there is so much that we can do with those inexpensive boxes that you might get from the department store or you might buy at a discount store. So here is today's project. It only takes one box top or box bottom to make this and then how you choose to dress it is completely up to you. But today we are going to dress the one that we make. This is a very large paper purse gift bag and I'm calling it a paper purse gift bag because I'm not lining it with any chipboard. But don't get me wrong, this is still a very sturdy, functional and beautiful bag. Now the one that we're going to make today will be slightly smaller than this one because I don't have any more of the jumbo size gift boxes. After this video, I am going on the hunt to see if I can find some more. When I was in the Dollar Tree, they only had one pack and I grabbed that one pack, but I'm gonna head out to another Dollar Tree to see if maybe they have some more of those boxes. So y'all know what time it is, it's time to make it. All right y'all, so here is the size box that we're going to be working with today. It is going to be the box size that measures 14 and a quarter inches long and it's almost nine and a half inches wide, it's slightly less than that. But it's the length that I'll be focused on when I'm making this bag. So it is 14 and a quarter inches long. So I have my box. I have two pieces of decorative cardstock that I'm going to add to the box. And this measures nine and a quarter by four and three quarters. Then I have a strip for my handle and it measures one and a half by 12. And then I have this decorative metal piece that I'll be putting on the front. And I bought a whole bunch of these at the Dollar General at the end of season last year. They had a clearance on all of their Christmas items. So I went in and just grabbed a whole bunch of cute little whatnots to be able to put on my boxes and bags for this year. So to start, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our handle. We're going to take the piece that measures one and a half by 12 and on the one and a half inch side, we're going to score at three eighths of an inch. We'll rotate it to the opposite one and a half inch side and score at half an inch. And I'm making the handle first because I want the glue to have a chance to harden into that curve so that when I'm bending this, it won't resist being bent. And I'm just going to place a little bit of glue all the way across on one piece. We'll get that stuck. And then I'll place glue on the opposite end. take this and I can just use my big old spatula to help spread that glue and get it stuck. But then you're also able to see that I'm starting to get a curve to this and that's exactly what I want. So now that we have this, I can take it, set it to the side and we can make the bag. So to make our bag, we are going to deconstruct to reconstruct. So I am just going to take these ends apart on all four sides. So once we have it open like this, we're going to go ahead and bring in the scoreboard so that we can make our scores. I'm just going to fold these under for right now and I'll put it in just like this. Now the outer flaps are one and seven eighths of an inch. So that's how wide our purse will actually be. So we're going to score this so that the bottom of our bag, which is this part here, will be one and seven eighths of an inch. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to score this at three because I want that one inch score. And I'll flip it and score at three to finish it. And then we'll score at eight. And then we're going to score at nine and seven eighths. So we're making our scores at three, at eight, and at nine and seven eighths. And then we're going to rotate it to the opposite end. I'm just going to tuck this flap under so that it won't be in my way. And we are going to score on this end at three and an eighth. And now I'll just flip it over. Come in at three and an eighth on this side and score until I meet that original three and one eighth inch score. All right, so here's what we did with our box completely open. We tucked in these sides. We already had this fold here, so we don't have to worry about doing anything with that. And we scored at three, we scored at eight, and we scored at nine and seven eighths. Then we rotated it to this opposite end. We're going to tuck that in and we scored at three and one eighth. So now all we need to do is fold and burnish all of these scores. All right, so once we have everything scored, folded and burnished, we are going to do exactly what we would normally do when we're making a box. We'll have these center flaps right here. We need to go ahead and cut those out. So I'll go up to that score mark, drag down with my finger blade, go to this score mark, drag down, and then I'll angle in. And we can reduce this a little bit as well if we want to, and I am going to reduce mine to almost in half. And then I'll rotate it and come to the opposite side, go up to that score mark, drag straight down. And then I'll reduce this piece as well. So then on one end, we are going to go ahead and remove these flaps, the part that we deconstructed. So let's go ahead and remove that. And then we'll go ahead and remove this piece right here as well. So now we're going to have this piece. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and just fold it in on itself. So I'll take some glue and I'm going to place some glue on this piece. You can remove this piece altogether if you want. I'm just going to fold it in because it adds just a little sturdiness to the bag. So I'm going to use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. This will be the front of our bag. This will be the top flap that will go over just like this. So on the back side of our bag, where we still have this fold flap, I am going to take my finger blade and I'm just going to reduce this because I don't want it to be as long as it is so that I can fold it in half. And then I'll cut out on this piece and I'll reduce this piece as well. And there'll be a tab right here I am just going to trim that away. I'm going to take my glue, place it on that tab, and just fold it in. And then we also need to remove these pieces here. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim that away. And I'll 
trim that away. So now your project piece should look like this. You should have your side flaps here, the tabs here, the half inch glue flap here, and then the fold over piece here. So what I'm going to do is bring my scoreboard back in. I'm going to take this piece and I'm just going to score it down the middle. That's just going to make it easier for me to pinch in and get that purse shape. So now we are ready to put it together. Before I put it together though, I want to go ahead and place down my decorative pieces. And I'm only placing the decorative pieces on the front and on the back. So I am going to place these down using some double stick tape. You can take these outside and spray them with your spray adhesive. You can place them in your Xyron sticker maker or if you want, you can use glue. I'm not using glue on this because I don't want to run the risk of the glue warping. All right, so I'm going to peel my tape backers away. And we're going to put this down. So I am just going to take this piece and I am going to place it down and the thing with the tape is you don't get a lot of wiggle room so once you put it down it's pretty much stuck wherever you put it so I'll flip it to this side I'm going to peel away my tape and we're going to do the same thing on this side so I'll take this piece going to put it down and so now we have our front and back to this about to be beautiful bag so all I'm going to do at this point is we take our glue we're going to place some glue on these tabs then we place glue on this glue flap and those are the only places that we need to place glue then all you need to do is take this piece, just kind of lay it down, bring this piece up, and bring this piece up to get all three pieces matched. And you want to make sure that when you're matching, you're matching top to top. And if you have any hanging over at the bottom, which I do on this one, I'll show you how to clean that up. So I'm going to grab my bone folder, go on the inside, and get everything nice and stuck. And then I'll take that bone folder and go along the outside to make sure that it's stuck at the edge. And then if you have any overhang at the bottom, I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it away just like that. Now we'll do the same thing on this side. So we'll have it like this. I'll take my glue place some glue right there and then I'll place glue on this glue flap then I can take this piece and fold it over wanting to make sure that I get it matched at the top because we can fix that bottom And I'm just going to bend that back so I can go on the inside with my bone folder and get everything nice and stuck. And just like that, we have a really nice looking purse. So where I made those scores, it makes it easy to pinch in to get that purse shape. So now when we close it, this is what we have. And I think that is just absolutely gorgeous, but we're not finished with it yet. So I have two magnets and I'm going to place one magnet on the inside. So I'm just going to take that magnet and put it right on the inside just like that. So the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to take a little bit of my glue 
if you have glue dots, you can just put a glue dot on the back, take this piece, and I'm just going to put it inside. And hopefully you can see that magnet on the inside. I'll use my bone folder to press that magnet down to make sure that it stays. So then I'm going to take this magnet, fold over the top, and let that magnet find that first magnet. And that's where we'll be placing it. So I am going to take some of my double stick tape, slide that magnet out of the way, and place that tape right there. I'll peel away that backer, fold this over, take that magnet, let it find again, and now it's stuck where I need for it to be. I'm going to take another piece of my double stick tape. I'm going to lay that double stick tape down on top of the magnet. This is just the way that I'm sticking it down. If you have a different way that you want to use, go ahead and give that a try. If it works for you, then that's what you go with. And I have that really sweet decorative piece that I got from Dollar General last year at the end of season. And I am just going to take some tape and I'm going to place tape right there. And then I'm going to take just a small strip of tape Take a tiny piece and a tiny piece here and I'm just going to place that tape right there. So now we can take this piece and we're going to place it down just like that and with a simple embellishment you can see that we have elevated the look of this box from being a gorgeous box all by itself, but now it is out of this stratosphere gorgeous. So all it takes is a little piece of embellishment and this is what we're able to do. So now we're gonna bring that handle in. It's already got its curve. I am just going to go in about a half an inch on both ends and do a bend. So this is what I have. Then I'm going to take my reptile glue Add some glue to this. And I'm going to take this piece and we are going to stick it right there. However you choose to put it, it's completely up to you. But let's just hold it in place until we get that nice hardening of the glue. All right, y'all, so my handle is on and it's nice and dry and don't you just love how this bag looks? It looks terrific. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually punch yourself a hole and add a couple of mini brads. If you were placing something very heavy in here, that's exactly what I would do. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. So it's very simple. All you need to do is open it, take your paper piercer, and pierce a little hole. I'm going to do that on both sides. Just going to pierce that hole. And now I'll grab a couple of my mini brads. You can use whichever color you want. They even have Christmas colored mini brads that you might want to take a look at. Take that brad, put it through, and open it. Take this bread, put it through, and open it. And so now that we have our mini brads in, you can see it adds a very nice decorative touch to the top of the bag, but it doesn't look too great on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of scrap, and we're going to place it right here and cover it. All right guys, so I cut myself a piece of scrap that measures three quarters of an inch by nine and one quarter of an inch. And all I'm going to do is take this and place it down. I have already added double stick tape to the back. So I am just going to place it down on the inside, just like that. And I'll get it stuck. 
Then if I have any overhang of my paper, I'll just trim it away. And so now when you look on the inside, you don't see those brads. So on the outside, we have the very nice decorative finish using brads, but that also adds some additional stability to the bag if you wanted to put something heavy inside. So there we have our gorgeous, gorgeous Christmas paper purse gift bag. It is absolutely fabulous. I am going to bring that first one back in so that y'all can see both of these. I can't get them both on camera at the same time, but you can see just how gorgeous these are. And you saw how easy it was to make these using just a Dollar Tree gift box. Your box does not have to come from the Dollar Tree, but if you happen to have some of these boxes just lying around, and many of you left comments saying that you've had these boxes for years, go ahead and pull them out. Now you can make boxes with them. And not only can you make boxes, but you can make beautiful paper purse gift bags. So guys, I hope that you have found this video helpful and inspiring. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.